as we get started here with win totals. Brandon, I'm just going to go ahead and ask you this. Uh, what is your process for figuring out which win totals you want to bet and how? Yeah, so much to everyone's surprise, it is a long and thorough process. So I'm <laughs> going to try to summarize the best I can here. But I, I try to kind of write down, okay, my, my process is like, okay, the, the game's just ended. It's June and we've got three months and kind of what, where does my brain go for these three months? Where, where are the notes that I'm taking? Where, where's, where's the process from start to finish? So I start out with big picture. I always feel like big picture is my forte. So I want to see the whole forest. I want to see the landscape. I want to see the whole thing before I start to zoom in. And then the whole process is zoom in further, 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 look at the trees, study the bark. But I want to start way zoomed out. And I mean, even zoomed out past this year. So I've got like my huge doc of, of rosters and team assets and draft picks and contracts and salary cap. For me, all that stuff matters because I, I am ranking and rearranging and analyzing all that. I want to see for me, what's the three-year outlook sort of look like for, for each team? Just, uh, you know, where's the salary cap headed? What players could end up being salary cap casualties, either a cut or a likely trade later in the year? Who are the trade candidates? What moves are coming? Um, I think it's really important too to use that for motivations. And this is one where you've got to get away from the numbers at the end of the day. When in, in this, one of the teams we'll talk about, I think this is really important where you can't just look and say, well, here are the players. Here's how their offense and defense should be. This team is bad, thus they will lose a lot of games. We need to know, what do they think that they are? We don't know, but we can guess. Do they think they're a playoff team? Do they think that they're tanking? Are they rebuilding? Are they contender? So that's the first step is just like, start at the way zoomed out, look at the landscape and kind of get a sense of where I'm at on each team. So far, so good. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I think as as we kind of look at this, like uh, the motivations, would, uh, I'll talk about as well. I think it's a, it's a good starting point, but it does make kind of sense. So from there, you kind of, you are trying to actually wind up projecting yeah. uh, a number then. Yeah, so once I kind of feel like, okay, I've got the big landscape, that's when I do my first initial kind of win projection. Really, projection is even overstated there. Win instincts. I'm just kind of saying, okay, based on what I've looked at, Let's put these conferences in order, one to fifteen. Let's put them in tiers. Where do the playoffs shake up? Where do the play, you know, play-ins look? And what win fits that? Just to kind of have a baseline to start from. And I do have a formula that looks back kind of at win totals the last three years. Those are a lot more predictive than you think. Obviously, less so with some teams when you know they trade away a superstar or something. Um, and the formula adjusts obviously more for more recent years. And basically, I'll say, okay, here's where I start, and I'm kind of doing. Each, each level of my process, I'm coming back and doing that again, refining, zooming a little further. So now I've got each team. Now I start with the Atlanta Hawks. They're top of the alphabet. And I say, okay, who did we add? What did we lose? And not just a name, but okay, we get maybe 20 more games of this player. We're, we're adding this coach in. And here's that's going to affect the defense in particular based on what we know in their history. What are the rotations looking like? What's the depth look like? And it's kind of like, okay, look at the overall team. And then in my notes, I even make basically like a thesis. What's the overall direction of the team in like two lines? And I know that sounds crazy because it's me, but in two lines, what are the Atlanta Hawks? What do they think that they are this year compared to last year? Where are they headed? So, and then I kind of do the process again, zoom in a little further. Now I want to look at offense rating and defensive rating. I think it's really important too. It's very common. I hear this a lot where it's like, okay, well, X team was 14th in offensive rating last year. And they added this guy, so they're going to be better offensively. Now I think they could be top 10. I think that that is a flawed way of, of looking at those ratings. It's more important to look at the actual number offensive rating than the rank within the league, because the rank within the league requires context. And I don't know what that context is until I've done all 30 teams. So it's more important to me, was your offensive rating 110 or 113 or 117? than that you were eighth or 15th in the league because one year eighth and 15th might be separated by 0.2 by like one two minute stretch at the end of the season another year eighth to 15th might be a huge gap and this last year for example we had a lot of superstars last year that were missing we had a lot of injuries especially in the west my theory overall and the numbers kind of back it up 
offense was a little worse last year than we would have expected, which means defense was a little better last year than we expected. But that doesn't necessarily carry over league wide from one year to the next. So I want to look at the, the ratings, but I'm kind of looking at the team trajectory and the actual number and not the ranking. Does that make sense? The distinction between the two? It does. It makes it makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm not 100 percent on board with you in terms of like I I think it's it's fine for the context of how you're approaching it. I think when you're using the rankings as a baseline for something, it's essentially you're trying to put it in, in correlation. Like it's whether or not you think those things do carry over. It's how much variance you think there will be year to year based off of those offensive and defensive performances. And I think a lot of that's going to be based off of the individual doing the cap, but go ahead. Yeah, that, that's fair. That's fair. So, so basically now I've got, okay. So I've got the last two, three years of offensive rating and then defense rating for each one. Again, obviously, the more recent years are a lot more relevant because the roster is a lot more similar, some teams more than others. And now I'm kind of saying, OK, here's where we're at last year. Here's where we were the year before. Based on my thesis, based on the trajectory, who we added, what the team looks like. First, should the offense be better or worse than last year? That's a pretty easy starter question. If I'm at 113 last year, should I be looking higher or lower than that? And then kind of how much and where, where does it go? And I put a range for each one, do the same with defense. And then once I'm done with that, now I take all 30 teams, put them in a row, you know, rank them, rank the ranges basically top to bottom. And now I got my offensive rank, my defensive rank. This is where it gets a little fun for me. So well, I'll be honest, this whole thing is fun. I'm a nerd. But so I've got, okay, here's a team that I have offense is eighth, defense is 15th. What is that? So now I want to actually like get totally out of the team context. I want to try to get rid of some of my anchors and biases. So I look back at the last three or four years and say, okay, what other team does this look like? Forget everything just based on offense, eighth, defense, 15th. Who else is that similar to? Oh, hey, here's a team in 2020 that was offense seventh, defense 16th. That's pretty similar. I'll make a note of them. And I make a list of like four or five, six teams that are like that. Sometimes those teams are very similar. Sometimes they're very distinct, but then I kind of look and say, okay, what are these teams? What What is, how many games did those teams win? What was that team? Were they a first round out? Were they a defensive stalwart that didn't really score much? And when they got to the playoffs, that was flawed. Were they a, you know, a rebuild team? You know, what, what sort of team were they? Were they a contender, a real championship team? And then that kind of gives me an, a flavor of, well, maybe that's what this team is going to look like now. So then it, ideally, if I've done my work in time, now is the first time I actually look at the posted over under. I like to do as much of my homework as I can before I get to the number. So I'm not anchored to it. And then I'd start to make my determination from there. So it matters. I, I now have a win total, but I really have a win range. Usually I have something like 46 to 52 wins. And so question one is this team I'm considering a pretty stable team? So should I be looking at the median there and think, okay, well, this is about a 49 win team. How's that compare? Or is this a team like the Pelicans where the range of outcomes is wider and I need to be considering the high end and the low end. And then, okay, so I'm at 49. The win total is 47 and a half. How does that rate? Does that, does that mean this is a bet or is there a better way if I like the over here? Is the better way to play a division outcome or a make or miss playoffs? If a team does hit this high end, do they qualify for an award then? Is there a coach of the year candidate or is there an MVP candidate? You know, just because you possibly like an over under doesn't necessarily mean that you should play it. There might be a better way to play that angle. So then I make my final decision, bat, lean, or pass. I've got my side. That's my process. 